Hi everyone, welcome to Informatica Support TV. My name is Ninju Bijli and today in this video, I will briefly explain the steps to install and configure PowerExchange for SAS with PowerCenter. The agenda for today's video, overview on PowerExchange for SAS product, PowerExchange for SAS architecture and its major components, registering the plugin with the repository service, how to configure the SPI server on the SAS machine. Also, we will have a quick look at a sample autoexec.sas file. So, what is PowerExchange for SAS? PowerExchange for SAS product helps to read and write from SAS data objects using PowerCenter sessions or mappings. That is, PowerExchange for SAS provides bidirectional connectivity to SAS database. PowerExchange for SAS facilitates the use of SAS data objects in the data integration process. And this is a separate licensed option. PowerExchange for SAS has a separate installation too. Central component of the PowerExchange for SAS product is known as the SPI server, the communication component. This communication component known as the SPI server needs to be running on the machine hosting the SAS database. So how does this work? Let's have a quick look at its architecture. As I mentioned previously, the central component of the PowerExchange for SAS is the communication component known as the SPI server. The SPI server is a multi-threaded TCP IP listener service. Being called as a listener, it's need, it needs to be running all the time on the SAS database if you wish to use the uh, SAS data objects within PowerCenter. The SPI server process handles requests from the designer and from sessions started using integration service. When you use the designer to import an SAS source or target definition to the PowerCenter repository, the PowerExchange for SAS client component requests the metadata from the SPI server. The SPI server in turn starts an SAS session to retrieve the relevant information from the SAS data objects. Similarly, when you run a workflow that uses an SAS source or target, the integration service uses the PowerExchange for SAS server component to start a session with the SPI server, which in turn starts an SAS session and retrieves the relevant data and passes it on to the PowerCenter engine. What are the major components of PowerExchange for SAS? PowerExchange for SAS installation includes three steps. First being the PowerExchange for SAS client component, PowerExchange for SAS server component, and the last one named as SPI server component, the communication component. PowerExchange for SAS client component needs to be installed on the machine hosting the PowerCenter client tools like designer, workflow manager or the workflow monitor. PowerExchange for client component is responsible for adding the import from SAS option in your designer tool. Also, this would add a registry entry corresponding to PowerExchange for SAS in your Windows machine. The registry entry corresponding to PowerExchange for SAS is named as PC underscore SASPI. PowerExchange for SAS server component will add the relevant binary files to InfoHome server bin folder and it would also take care of copying the repository service plugin file pmsaspi.xml file to the InfoHome server bin plugin folder. The SPI server needs to be installed on the machine hosting the SAS database. So once you complete the installation steps, before you start using SAS data objects with PowerCenter, there are two more steps to complete. The first being registering the plugin with the repository service. Registering the plugin can either be done from the command line or using the admin console. To register any plugin with the repository service, First, we need to enable the repository service in exclusive mode. 
the pm rem the pm rep command that needs that can be used to register plugin is is available in this slide once you complete the plugin registration the plugins tab in the admin console under the repository service will list all the plugins that has been successfully registered within this particular repository service and the next step is how to configure the SPS server on the SAS machine. Before you start the SPS server, there are few properties which needs to be configured for this particular process. Port number is the port on which you want the SPS server to start. The default port being 11080. And the log file path is the absolute path of the SPS server log. Application path is the exact location of the XS executable on the SAS machine. Working directory is a folder where the SPS server will create some temporary files, the data code files. An autoexec name points to the autoexec.sas file. By default, SPS server would be looking for this autoexec.sas file on the working directory. If you wish to reference the autoexec file on a different location make sure that you provide the absolute path in this property if your SAS database is ru running on a Unix platform then you could use the SPI config on the shell prompt to configure the same property So here I have put a format of autoexec.sas file, a sample one. libname is an SA standard keyword. In the above example, temp and SA's test are any names by which you want the SPS server to identify the SA's libraries. The path mentioned using these names are folders or directories where the SA's data reside on the SA's database. With this, we come to an end of this presentation. Uh, we would love to hear back from you. For any suggestions or feedback, please write to us at supportvideos at informatica.com. Also, you could follow us on Twitter. Thank you.